power. What does his word power mean? Well, it could mean when somebody dominates over another person, perhaps they feel that they have power, that they're empowered. But really, I think that sort of power is closer to the definition of weakness. When you feel that you have power over someone, I think that that makes you weak. To dominate over someone does not give you power. That gives you a sense of power. That's false power. But to have power over yourself, over your mind, over your actions, I think that's true power. And when you have power over yourself, all of your actions are, in result, powerful. So I still get a lot of young people watching these videos. And when I say young, I guess I'm referring to college students, high school students. Oftentimes they write me for encouragement. They write me for advice. God knows why. Uh, I'm not really the exemplar of excellence, but I do enjoy sharing my ideas, sharing myself with people, and I guess that gives me power. Now, I was just outside smoking a cigar, and I was just observing a squirrel running around doing what squirrels do, just doing amazing uh, acrobatics, doing amazing, uh, running up and down trees, swirling around, deftly jumping from the fence to the, to the shed, to the branch, like it was nothing. Every time I see a squirrel do this, I'm like, wow, that's amazing. This animal treads trees and branches like it's absolutely nothing. And when I think of that, I think of power. The animal is doing what it's supposed to be doing, what it was designed to be doing, and it does it with brilliance, with excellence, and with mastery. That's powerful. And it makes me think that we human beings aren't so different. Now, if that squirrel tried to be, tried to fly like a bird, or if it tried to attack, uh, let's say, a human like a lion would, then it wouldn't be powerful. It would be stupid. It would, it would be dumb. It would be going against what it was designed to do, to run up and down trees and forage for nuts and berries, and it does it very well. And in like terms, if we do things that we aren't meant to be doing, aren't supposed to be doing, have no business doing, then that makes us weak, dumb, and stupid. So oftentimes, you know, I get a lot of people out of goodwill and out of good means saying to me, Dave, wow, you could have been a doctor, you could have been a lawyer. You could have been a Wall Street stockbroker. You could have been this and that and this and that. And I can't help but think that that person is lacking uh, a sense of power. That person does not understand what power really means. That person has lost uh, track of reality. Because if I were to be a doctor, or a lawyer, or a chemist, something like that, things that perhaps I could have done, 
if I've tried and, you know, I went through the, the steps to become those things, sure, I could have become those things, but I would be weak. I would be a weak doctor. I would be a weak lawyer. I would be a weak stockbroker. No matter how much money that resulted in, no matter how much, uh, how many awards or titles that resulted in, I would still be weak. I am only powerful when I live my own life, when I do what I feel in my heart what I'm supposed to be doing. So when college students ask me, well, Dave, what am I supposed to be doing? How do I find my passion? How do I find my dream? These things have become such a disgusting cliche. And in large part, I've uh, promoted these terms. Passion, follow my dream, follow my heart, follow my desires. All these terms that have become cliches. It's very simple, guys. It's very simple. Do what you're, what you're supposed to be doing, what you were born to be doing. I don't care if it's being the doctor, being the lawyer, being the artist, being the tea connoisseur, whatever it is. All you have to do is do that. There's nothing else you could do. Everything else that you do is just an act. It's just a... Uh, it's just a drama that you're playing out and you're pretending to be someone else. Now, to the level in which you are somebody else will equal or will result in the level of your disempowerment. So in other words, the fake you are, the weaker you are. Your true power comes from within. It comes from no external force. It comes from nobody uh, giving you power. Nobody giving you a position. Nobody giving you a title. No institution giving you uh, a little piece of paper that says you're now a PhD or you're now a master in sociology. Those things... They're just a part of this game we're playing, this, you know, society game. Now, mind you, those things are good. Go ahead. Get your PhD. Get your CEO level job. Get your whatever it is. But those things should be, always should be uh, offsprings or results of you being who you are. If they are the result of you being who you are, then all the better to them. Hooray. Great. Amazing. You've accomplished a lot. Go. Keep on doing that. Keep on getting the awards. Keep on trying to climb up the corporate ladder. Keep on trying to, whatever it is. If it's coming out of your power, that is when you are powerful. But, unfortunately, we live in a world that is greatly cut up into little bits and pieces. Those bits and pieces are the status quo, rules, regulations, uh, modes of operation, modes of conduct, how one should behave, how one should live, how much money one should make what sort of jobs one should get. And we grow up in this system of these little bits and pieces that are governed by a body of people who are whose sole purpose is to protect these bits and pieces and to make sure everybody's in a line with these bits and pieces. And your power may not fit into those bits and pieces. Who you are very well may not fit into these lines and graphs and structures and barriers and units of the, any given society, our society. So the impressionable mind that's in college or high school or even the full-grown adult may say, whoa, 
Well, I really love black tea. I love it. Oh, man, I just love tea. I want to write about tea. I want to go to China. I want to learn Chinese. I want to do everything tea. But that doesn't really fit into the metrics of what my parents want me to do. It doesn't really fit into uh, making a lot of money. It doesn't fit into prestige and fame and all these other things that we're supposed to expect in this society. So what do I do? I can't, I can't love tea. So I gotta, fuck it, I gotta go be the doctor, I gotta go be the lawyer, I gotta be the accountant, I gotta be what society wants me to be. That's the only way to live. So then you go on, and you live, and you live, and you live, and you're 40, and you're 50, and you're 60, and you live the life of being disempowered. You were never empowered. You lived a life based upon what everyone else wanted you to do. All the while, you forgot that nobody else is greater than you. What makes any other person in this world greater than you? Nobody's greater than you. No man, no woman, no color of a person, no sex... No culture, no job, nobody's greater than you. Nobody's greater than you. So when you really think about that, and you ponder that for a while, you come to the realization that, fuck it, I'm just going to do what my destiny or what I'm supposed to be doing is. Whatever that is, I'm going to do it and... If it doesn't fit into anybody else's scheme for me, plan for me, then so be it. Because if I could live a life of just one year of doing what I love doing and then I die after that year, as Alan Watts brilliantly expresses, that would be better than living a life of 40 or 50 or 60 years of just bullshitting and pretending to be somebody that I never was. So, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I didn't have this understanding. I wish that somebody would have told me that. But, everything works out the way that it's supposed to work out. So, you may be in a situation right now where you feel very disempowered and the people around you have no interest in empowering you whatsoever, or inspiring you, rather. But that's okay. Because maybe you need 10 years of uh, sleep. Maybe you need 15, 20, 30 years of sleep in order to wake up. Everybody is on their own schedule. But, with that said... If you could understand this game that everyone's trying to mold you into, and they don't even know most of these people that they're trying to mold you into it because they're being molded into it, and the people who were around before them molded them into it. So we have a vicious cycle, vicious cycle of ignorance, of disempowerment, and you're just stuck in it, clueless. But there's a little thing inside of you, like the movie uh, Metri uh, Matrix brilliantly uh, turns into a metaphor. The whole movie is really a metaphor for this concept I'm speaking of. The metaphor of you being in a, in a system which you never knew you were in to begin with. But one day that phone rings and you pick up that phone and you say, okay... Are you ready to wake up? And Neo's like, who is this? And Morpheus says, dude, it's time to wake up. You want to wake up? Get your ass over here, man. Get your ass unplugged. It's time to wake up. But you don't need Morpheus. You don't need your parents. You don't need the government. You don't need any of these other people who you think are powerful because they have money. You think they're powerful because they drive a BMW. You think they're powerful because people know their name. 
These people are no more powerful than you. In fact, most of those people are still sleeping. Don't let images fool you. Don't let money fool you. Don't let uh, illusions of grandeur fool you. Power c comes from truth. Power is truth. There absolutely is no difference. So when you wake yourself up, which really means to grab the reins back, to empower yourself, every action from that base, that core of power, will be powerful as well. So your life will be powerful. Now, it doesn't matter the results at that point. It doesn't matter if you don't become rich. It doesn't matter if you don't get the Mercedes. It doesn't matter if you don't, you know, get the looks of a supermodel with plastic surgery, all these things that we're, that we're told to become and do from TV, Hollywood, and all these, you know, fake people that surround us. It doesn't matter. If you do get those things, if you really want them, then like I said, cool. Yeah. You're rich. You're cool. You know, you're able to do whatever you want. Travel. Whatever it is that you, makes you feel good. As a result of that. Fine. But, don't let those things, the wanting of those things, and this is what I'm getting at, don't let those illusions change you. Don't let them disempower you. Don't become fake just to attain something that was never real to begin with. Thank you guys. This is Dave Mate signing out. Thanks for listening. Peace.